and we should be live. Good evening, at least evening here in Northern Ireland. If you're watching elsewhere in the world, ah, good day. Uh, this is our back to our midweek uh, Bible study from Calvary Bray Valley as we're going through wit uh, no, blah, 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 as we're going through Proverbs, calling it wisdom for daily living. That's the important thing about Proverbs is to give us wisdom. And, uh, you know, this ties in really well with the message that we had last Sunday of knowing what God's will for us is. Uh, and that's what wisdom provides. So we are going to be in the second half of Proverbs chapter 4 this evening, uh, starting at verse 14. That's where we'll pick up, but we'll probably go back a little bit, so I don't know. Is Ernie watching? Yeah. Oh, man, we miss you, bro. I'm so glad you are. Uh, this is good. Uh, so you see where we're at. So next week, Lord willing, Ernie will be bringing the study uh, to us in uh, Proverbs chapter 5. So uh, let's ask the Lord's blessing on this. Oh, that cheers my heart. <laughs> Bless you, man. Uh, Father, thank you. Thank you, Lord, for the connection we have through this uh, broadcast. Thank you, Lord, for the connection we have, more importantly, through you, Jesus. And Lord, we ask you to just uh, weave your spirit through us, binding us together in love, Lord. Um, Father, we pray that this word, your word, would go forth, reaching our hearts, Lord, and binding us closer to you, Lord. And we pray that this is a unifying work with the Spirit and of the Spirit that you're doing tonight through your word, through this great word in Proverbs. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, uh, last week we I called uh, this teaching, Listen to Your Father, because that's how it started out in the first verse. So this is called, Keep Listening to Your Father. <laughs> as, we, as we continue his thoughts, you remember uh, last week it was Solomon speaking to... Um, to his, uh, was this his sons in the first verse? I don't have it with me, um, I believe so. And then it kind of got to my son. Uh, but nonetheless, it's Solomon um, writing down actual words that he said uh, to teach wisdom, to, to, to pass his wisdom on to his sons, just like he received from his father David uh, to, to, to get wisdom. Yeah, it did start out. Here, my children. Are here, O oh sons, yeah. fathers and sons. Yeah, yeah. So it's to, to all of his sons, but and a big part of this is just directed to his yeah. son, his yeah. firstborn, the heir to the, his throne, uh, Rehoboam. Um, if you recall what wisdom is, wisdom is knowledge that's applied. It's the proper application of knowledge. Remember, there's three stages of knowledge. Knowledge itself, getting the facts. Understanding, which is knowing what the facts mean. And wisdom, which is putting those facts to work. It's, wisdom is the action part of knowledge. And it's putting your knowledge into, into action. It's applying that knowledge in the proper way. Uh, and what does wisdom look like? It's doing those things that please God. Um, it's, it, wisdom is to act, act godly. Wisdom is to act with righteousness. Um, what does the opposite of wisdom, foolishness, look like? It looks like evil. Because that's what it is. It's unrighteousness. It's ungodliness. Um, it just is sort of um, softened with the terms of foolishness or uh, wickedness. It's all the same thing. So, uh, the father has been passing on his sons, and not only is this word from Solomon to his children, but it's also from our Father God to his children. All of us 
can be seen as sons of God in him. And this is the, fa the Father speaking to us wisdom. And so it's best to pay attention to and hear what God has to say through this man. Um, and very often in Proverbs, as we said, we see a couple of patterns. We've seen the, and still will, the what, why, what to do, and why you should do it as the two sides of wisdom. Um, knowing why we should do such a thing is really helpful. Um, especially, I, I find it helpful. <laughs> I don't like just to be told what to do. But if you're also instructed on why you should do it, that helps, doesn't it? It helps us to be able to, to, to act in wisdom when we know why and the results of it. So we'll see that. And this second half of Proverbs 4 also has a, another major pattern of Proverbs, which is good and bad contrasted. You have the good contrasted with the bad as parts of the what and why. So we have all this going on tonight. And so we'll continue to see why we should not act unwisely or act ungodly or act wickedly. Um, to back up a little bit, sort of to introduce our section tonight, which starts at verse 14, we'll go back to, to the previous section, which is verses 10 through 12, uh, which I had called last week the value of wisdom. Uh, I'll start in 10 and then continue on um, through verse, uh, on into this section here, the danger of the wicked way, the fifth section in this book. So, verse 10, Hear, my son, and accept my words, that the years of your life may be many, I have taught you the way of wisdom. I have led you in the path, paths of uprightness. This is the key verse. When you walk, your step will not be hampered. And if you run, you will not stumble. Keep hold of instruction. Do not let her go. Guard her, for she is your life. Wisdom, this instruction, helps us in our walk. We know in the Old Testament, our life our day-to-day -day life, how we live our lives in Christ is called our walk. Our walk with the Lord is based and guided by wisdom. Um, and when you walk in the Lord in a wise, godly way, you will not stumble. You will not trip up. And this leads into the next section. Uh, verse 14 says, do not enter the path of the wicked and do not walk in the way of the wicked. Avoid it. Do not go on it. Turn away from it and pass on. So, uh, as this is a father warning and instructing his sons, you know, an important role of a father is to do that very thing is to warn his children, instruct his children, train his children. And so often, uh, to, to, to have a better life, a father will give warnings and also set boundaries. Uh, so to not listen to the warnings of your father, and for us not to listen to the warnings of our father is not wise. It's not a smart thing to do, but it is smart if we listen to his warnings as he instructs us as a good father. Uh, he loves us, you know, and he, he doesn't just tell us what to do just because, you know, like what does the father say? Um, you know, a child might might ask their father, you know, why should I do this? And the father answers, because I said so. <laughs> you know, Jesus doesn't work it that way. He says so, but he also tells us why. And we know behind it is pure love that's guiding it. Pure love that wants the best for us and does not want us to trip up 
in our walk, does not want to stumble in our walk with Jesus. Um, so he says here, the what? Don't follow the path of the wicked. Don't walk in the steps of sinners. Instead, flee from it. Uh, 1 Corinthians 6, verse 18, tells us something to flee from. Again, this comes from last Sunday morning, too, with that message as well. But it says in 1 Corinthians 6, verse 18, Flee from sexual immorality. For every other sin a person commits is outside the body. But sexual immorality, oh, excuse me, the sexually immoral person sins against his own body. <laughs> There's a what and a why, too, from Paul. Um, flee sexual immorality because it's harming ourself. Um, uh, in 1 Thessalonians 5, chapter 5, verse 22 says, Abstain from, abstain, flee from, don't partake, participate in, abstain, avoid, uh, turn from every form of evil, it says. And Ephesians chapter 5, yes, the Annie question. question. Annie. Says, how can God instruct us? Sorry, or Jesus, how can God instruct us? Oh, how can God instruct us? Well, He instructs us. He actually teaches us uh, through the Bible. The Bible is known as God's Word. It's God speaking oh. to us. And also, what is immoral or immoral? Oh, immoral. Okay, is basically immoral. Annie is sinful. Is uh, being moral is to be right and do what's right before God. To be immoral then is to be sinful. So. Um, Sexual immorality is sinful immorality. Um, as we said Sunday, it's any um, uh, sexual acts that are outside the marriage bonds. Uh, that's sexually immoral. And immorality is any sinfulness, anything that's not right before God. And how does he instruct us? Well, just moral is being right with God. Immoral is the opposite. Yeah, Cindy has a good point. In, uh, to be moral is to be right with God or do what's right before God. To be immoral is the opposite. Um, hope that helps. <laughs> Thank you, Pastor Rick. Yeah. Okay. And so he instructs us through his word. He tells us how to be moral. He doesn't just tell us to be moral. He tells us how we can be moral. That's the, the way of wisdom. Wisdom, remember, is action, properly applying what you know, properly doing what is right. That's wisdom, and that's why he does instruct us in that. Um, so he instructs us all throughout the Bible to do what's right. And like I said in Ephesians 5, verse 11, he goes even a step further in uh, in this, from abstaining from every form of evil, fleeing from evil, goes a step further where he says, take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them. Bring to light those sinful deeds called the deeds of darkness. And bring to light that, which is a step further. Okay, so in this chapter he says, do not go the way of the wicked. Avoid it, turn from it, flee from it, pass it by. Um, next verse 16 through 19 says this, why should we flee from the immoral, the, the uh, ungodly person? He says, for they cannot sleep unless they have done wrong. They are robbed of sleep unless they have made someone else stumble. For they eat the bread of wickedness and drink the wine of violence. But the path of the righteous is like the light of dawn, which shines brighter and brighter until the full day. The way of the wicked 
is like deep darkness, and they do not know what they stumble over. <laughs> They're walking around stumbling in the dark. Um, blind guides leading the blind. Um, so it says the wicked, the, the, the foolish, the un immoral, cannot sleep unless they do wrong. They think about doing wrong day and night. Um, they, think of, they, they, they think about it, they live for it, doing what's wrong. Um, as it says, they eat and drink <laughs> wickedness and violence. Later on in the Proverbs, Solomon will describe this. You saw, saw here the contrast now that I said would be, would be coming of, of bad contrasted with good. Um, and this is what we have here. This is the bad. Um, and Solomon says in, in Proverbs chapter 20, verse 17, Bread gained by deceit or, or, or by cheating is sweet to a man, but afterwards his mouth will be full of gravel. You know, it's like eating... Uh, uh, what does it say there? Eating um, the bread of wickedness. It's like, mm, yeah, this is good. You know, it's, it's it's good to be wrong and good to be bad. And then you're eating and you're doing this, doing these things wrong. And all of a sudden, you know, maybe it's not so good. <laughs> it's like your bread, your mouth fills instead of tasty bread, it's full of gravel and sand. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but in verse 18, it said that contrast, the evil do this, but the path of the righteous is like the light of dawn, which keeps getting brighter and clearer. What does contrast mean? Oh, contrast. Contrast, Jenny, means to compare two different things. Light and dark. In, like light and dark like day and night. And like the light of day is contrasted. It's set up and compared and is shown to be different. The light of day from the darkness of night. That's a contrast. Um, sweet and sour. Yeah, sweet and sour. Well, not everything. Uh, yeah. Yeah, like it said in that verse 19, the way of the wicked is like walking in deep darkness. The wicked, like you said, then stumble about in darkness. Uh, they don't, And they don't even know what they stumble over. Jesus kind of talked about this in Matthew chapter 15, verse 14, where he said of these, these teachers that were wrong, um, they are blind guides, Jesus said. And if the blind lead the blind, both will fall into a pit. That's sort of like what the wicked people and so many worldly people today do. They say, hey, this is what you do. Follow me. You know, this, you know, believe like I believe. And, you know, this is what you should think. And it's, it's the blind leading the blind. And both will fall into a pit and stumble over life doing that. Um, Jesus also said in John chapter 12, in verse 35, he says, So Jesus said to them, the people he was talking to, he says, about himself as the light. He says, The light is among you for a little while longer. Walk while you have the light, lest darkness overtake you. The one who walks in darkness does not know where he's going. So we walk, we live our, our, our lives with Jesus. He's the light, and we know where we're going, and we follow him. One more. 1 John, <laughs> chapter 2, verse 11 says, and this is an example of dark and light. He says, But whoever hates his brother is in the darkness and walks in the darkness, 
and does not know where he is going because the darkness has blinded his eyes. It's the problem with darkness, with the sinfulness. It blinds them and they can't see. But the Father's will for us is to be wise and to walk in light. So Solomon continues in this next section, which I've called, Hold on to them. Hold on to wisdom for your life. Hold on for your very life. Um, it starts out with a what and then a why. What? My son, verse 20. My son, be attentive. Pay attention to my words. Incline, turn your ear to my sayings. Let them not escape from your sight. Keep them within your heart. Why? For they are life to those who find them, and healing to all their flesh. Keep your heart with all vigilance. Be very on top of, of guarding your heart. Be vigilant um, and watching. For from it, your heart, flow the springs of life. Before we get there and explain that, let me look at the others. Verse 20 says, My son, give attention, pay attention to my words. Our friend Dave Guzak wrote, The lessons of wisdom cannot be, or, oh, excuse me, the lessons of wisdom can be given, but never received. Solomon often exhorted, encouraged his son to pay attention and keep the lessons of wisdom before his eyes. Receive! Receive, open your heart, receive the lessons I'm giving you. Um, he goes on to say, the rest of this chapter, Proverbs 4, verses 20 through 27, make mention of the body at least 11 times. Eyes, feet, and heart are mentioned twice, and ear, flesh, mouth, lips, and eyelids each once. It is a section that speaks powerfully on how we can dedicate each part of our body to wisdom and God's honor. Later, the Apostle Paul picks up on this as he writes in Romans chapter 6, Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body to make you obey its passions. Those who have been brought from death to life. Oh, excuse me, I skipped a verse of line. Do not present your members as instruments for unrighteousness, but present yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life. And your members, your parts of your body, your eyes, ears, mouth, um, as, to God as instruments for righteousness. So, so in verse 21 said, uh, let these wise words be received. Pay attention and keep them within your heart. Now, the heart, th that inner will of, of a person um, has been described by the prophet as the heart of a man is deceitfully wicked. Who can know it? But the Christian has a, a heart and a soul that has been redeemed, rescued from sin. And a new heart has been given to us as believers. It kind of like the old heart is still there. The sinful heart is there. The old nature is there. But a new heart's been sort of laid over it. Annie asks, what is an epistle? A -P -I -S -O -L. Epistle. epistle or apostle? Or answer both. Yeah. Um, and if you're asking uh, what is an epistle, epistle is um, the name of the letters that were written in the Bible in the New Testament by Paul, um, Peter, John, and others. It's a, an epistle is just a fancy word for a letter. You know, a letter that you write. And those letters 
are now books of the Bible. Um, what you mean, I have meant apostle. And apostle, if that's what you meant, what Paul was, was like the, the uh, top leaders of the early church. And they're the ones whom God gave uh, the instructions and, the, and they wrote it down in the books of the Bibles and the, those epistles, those letters that they wrote that became books of the Bibles, the instructions and teachings um, for the Christian. So we're talking about our hearts and we, we, we've been given a new heart um, when we receive Jesus into our hearts, you know, um, and it's, it's renewed, it's made new by filling it with new stuff. And we fill it with the Word of God. When we read the Bible, we want it to be more than just words in our mind. We want it to sink down and work into our heart, our inner being. We want to do what it says to do and want to believe as it tells us to believe because that's God's way. Uh, in verse 22 it says, um, these words of wisdom are life to those who find them. Um, it, and this is what the Word of God brings. The Word of God, the words of wisdom, um, wrote uh, that, you know, the ways we ought to go, I've sort of lost my train of thought, I'm sorry. Um, you know, the Word of God brings life and light and healing to those old hearts of ours. Uh, that's why he says, verse 23, keep your heart with all vigilance. Now, vigilance, I said, is being um, on your guard, watching at all times, for from it flow the springs of life. So we're to guard our heart. We're to guard what we let in, what we believe, what we receive, um, and be ever watchful. Just like the gatekeeper that we read about in the Old Testament. There was a job of the gatekeeper. And the gatekeeper was to, was to guard the gates, the entries to the city. And if he saw something that was harmful, that was bad, some enemies were coming, he would close the gates to guard um, evil from coming against the city and coming into the city were to act as the gatekeeper of our heart, to be ever watchful of what we allow in. Um, and, and like I said, we have a filter for what comes into our mind and what seeps into our heart. And that is the Word of God itself. We compare... Uh, what we hear and what we know and what we believe with the Word of God that it lines up. Um, speaking of a gatekeeper, Jesus used this, um, used this image as he talked about in John uh, chapter 10. Verse 3 he said, uh, To him the gatekeeper opens. The sheep hear his voice. And he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. The him that Jesus is talking about here really is himself. And so he says, to him the gatekeeper opens. The sheep hear his voice. And he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. Jesus calls us. And we open the gates of our heart and understanding to him and let, let his spirit come in. Yeah. Because there's two things we can let into our heart. Our heart is like a, 
a well, you know, a, a well in the ground where we pump up water from. It holds water. And that water can either be bitter and poisoned, or it can be fresh and clear and living water. And that's what we want in our heart. As Jesus also said in John chapter 7, verse 38, Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. And that gives a beautiful picture of us. Out of our hearts flow the springs of life, bubble up, clear, pure action led by wisdom and so on. So finally, our last section of this, of this chapter, 4, chap section 7, how to walk steadily, how to not stumble. And all of these are what? These are all what? Yes. Did you mention filters? Yes. Okay. And he's asking what a filter is. Well, a filter is a, something that you strain uh, things through that, that leaves out, um, uh, like there's a filter on a washing machine that, that the water goes through and catches, any in, and catches stuff. stuff or, or bad stuff. Yeah, bad stuff. Um, a lot of water bottles, you know, like a you know, Brita water purifier thing, you pour the water in as a filter. It filters out. It keeps out all the bad stuff and the pure yeah, sieve, stuff goes a through. Sieve is a heck yeah, of a, yeah, like yeah a, a sieve, sieve like you use for cooking, a sieve or a sieve. Um, you know, like you have pasta, you have a bowl of pasta, and you pour it into a sieve. It filters out the the lets the water flow out and keeps the the pasta that you want. Mm -hmm. So you don't have a a bowl of mush. <laughs> okay, and the word of God is like that in our lives. Mm. You know, we look at things through that filter. The Bible helps us to filter out the bad stuff, the immoral, like you said earlier. From It filters out the things bad stuff harmless. to keep the good. Yeah, and those things that are harmless keeps us from, from bad. Okay, so let's finish this chapter. The last four verses are this. Put away from you crooked speech, and put devious, uh, sneaky, lying talk far from you. Let your eyes look directly forward, and your gaze be straight before you. Ponder, think over the path of your feet, then all your ways will be sure. Do not swerve or move to the right or to the left. Turn your foot away from evil. So, what are we to do? First, we're to guard our tongue. Watch what we say. Put away from yourself um, a crooked speech or a devious tongue. Uh, James 1, in chapter 1, verse 26, said, If anyone thinks he is religious and does not hold his tongue, but deceives his heart, this person's religion is worthless. How often I have, and you probably have, have said something and immediately just, oh, I wish I could take that back. That's not what I meant. That's not real me. Uh, you know, keep ourselves from, from bad speech. Devious tongue. Uh, what does devious mean? Like lying? Devious means but lying, sneaking, trying to cover, saying one thing when you actually mean another. Yeah. Um, uh, to to get your own way and yeah. Um, verse twenty five. Let your eyes look directly forward, and your gaze be straight before you. We want our view of life to be straight and clear. Again. We view life through, now in this case, the lens of Scripture. Um, we see through, uh, uh, like, you know, I have these, these, these glasses. You know, and I, I look through the, the lenses. 
and it helps me to see clearly. When I don't have them, things are kind of blurry, not clear. The Bible is like that. The Bible gives us the, the lenses that we can see life clearly as we look through it. Um, yeah, and we want to be looking forward and not distracted to the right or to the left. Jesus said in Luke chapter 9, the last verse of that chapter, Jesus said to them, No one who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. You know, in other words, you've, you've put your hand to the plow and you're, you're trying to, to plow a straight furrow. But then you look back and you think, you know, how did I used to do it? Or what did I, how did I used to live? Or things were like back it's then. The yeah, the things of the world. What's going to happen? You know, looking back, instead of being a straight, it's going to go crooked. You're going to plow a crooked, messed up, worthless field. Hmm? Kind of like when you're driving. Kind of like when I'm driving. <laughs> and I look to the right, and I stare to the right, and I look to the left. <laughs> And the car goes that way. <laughs> yeah, Cindy uh, uh, keeps me on the straight and narrow. Keeps me on the straight path. Sometimes by her screams and panic. <laughs> the last two verses. The path you take, he says, think about the path for your feet. Ponder. Think over. This word ponder literally means to roll flat. It's, it's used to prepare a way to level the surface, but also to think about, to roll it around, to mull it over, to think it over in your mind and, and, and put strength to it. So it says, think it over. Think on the path that you, you wake. Um, and, keep, and, and keep it straight. Uh, again, Guzik wrote, if one would consider the destination of their present path, where is the path I'm on? Where is my walk leading me? Or our walk in Jesus is leading us to heaven and eternal life. If one would consider where our present path leads us, it would lead us to a much more wise living. When we carefully ponder where we're headed, it helps to establish our wise direction and helps us not turn to the right or to the left. We do not want to be distracted in our walk with Jesus from the way of wisdom. And this chapter helps keep us right as we think about and we're called to do what's right. So, Father, we thank you for your word. Thank you for your care for us. Thank you, Lord, that you keep us. Help us, Lord, to walk the path of wisdom. Help us to keep straight on it, looking to you. Our end result and our path will be straight. Don't let us stroll off or veer, you know, get away the right or to the left, but keep straight with you, Lord, and doing what's right and what's pleasing to you, because that is pleasing for everyone else and good for ourselves. So thank you, Lord, for your strength that gives us wisdom and gives us the strength to do what that wisdom tells us to do. Thank you, Lord. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So bless you, my brothers and sisters. I hope you're having a great day. I hope you will have a great day and uh, a great week. Oh, my blessings to you as we keep walking the path of wisdom and doing what's right. <laughs> All right. Bye-bye. <laughs>